Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, have you come across this problem where you set up your telescope ready for solo imaging or observing? You got it set up, you got the nice sun blazing down, okay, and you're trying to image or you're trying to focus on your target, also using the solar filters as always to protect your eyes and as you're looking through the eyepiece you're trying to focus but you can't see very clear because the sun is beating down on you you can't really see much and it can be quite difficult sometimes and uh, many a times I get frustrated particularly if I'm using the quark I'm trying to image with the quark I'm trying to focus onto my image and uh, because the quark is just literally um, you know you're just looking for a tiny screen on your laptop that sun is you know it's quite bright it, even that is hard to focus even though I'm not looking through the eyepiece so I had a look online and believe it or not I was looking for something that I could somehow shield the entire tandem system uh, with some kind of shade now there are some shades that you can get on some retailers but these sun shades are very very difficult to find and there are some where they do mount on the telescope tube which they like flare out like a fan which they're okay but they're not the best also very overpriced and to be honest with you they're not exactly what I'm looking for now I had look into using like a solar hood or blanket where you can just drape the blanket over and as you're observing at the Sun it is um, it does help massively however one thing I found about those they're all good they're all practical but again, you, you can only use it as a temporary fix. You can't actually have it fixed onto the telescope. So every time you're at the eyepiece, you've got to drape the blanket over. You can't have the solar hood mounted on the telescope because all you're going to get is drag. They do fit over the telescope tube and they do sort of, in a way, you know, they do cool down the tube as well and they do protect uh, the optics and the quark it does a very good job however you know, it's a bit of a wind catcher you know it can get blown off all right it can affect the tracking all right there are many several factors so you can never ever get a perfect uh, combination so yes I did consider one of those sun hoods or blankets they do if you get them to a certain way where they do attach over the telescope and drape over but then you're going to risk chances of the as the telescope mount slews uh, there may be instances where the that actual hood could catch on to anything on there and it may affect the tracking so there are advantages and disadvantages I did consider that I have used one and believe me it's a massive help it really does help but it's still not the perfect choice because there are certain things that I need some form of shade not only to protect for me getting a bit of sunburn but also I don't want it too big I want it sort of compact but also built within the system so it's a bit of a niche really it's a bit of a niche subject to cover because I've not seen any videos that cover this and I think it needs readdressing to us here so in this video please hit a like button before we start and again if you're new to this channel please subscribe onto this channel please share this video out and also please hit the bell it will keep you notified for any new projects that I publish out very very soon so 
If you're interested on this idea I'm about to show you guys and girls, please keep watching and let's do this. So the first component that we're going to require is this. Now I featured this in the last video on the EQ Advanced Mount and I featured this camera L-shape adapter. Now don't get me wrong I've used it on a few occasions but I've got to a point where I don't longer use it anymore. However in this video I'm going to utilize this L-shaped bracket because I found another use for it. Now you'd be wondering why I drilled two holes. This will become apparent later on in the video but uh, you will find on certain parts of the video that these are missing. Now this is what I've done I've pre-drilled some holes, I basically drilled some 5mm holes and I, well, I drilled 4mm holes and then recut or re-tapped using an M5 thread, okay? But this will become apparent a further ahead in the video. Now the L-shaped bracket does cost £30, okay? But it is a very good bracket and you can mount your DSLR camera on any EQ mount and all that. However, what I found useful about this is it can be stripped down. Now, you can make your own L-shaped bracket. It really is up to you to save money. But I do like the certain features that I'm very, very interested. One, there's like a rubber grip, which will add a lot of traction. All right, as I'm making my project, this will give me a good firm hold okay so that's why I want it uh, what you'll have to do is we're going to remove the mechanism so to do that all you do is hold this part of the knob and then twist the lever opposite side like that and what you're doing is you're unscrewing the main mechanism now this is spring tensioned and with the spring tension, it should pop off like that. You may get a bit of grease, but there's the spring, all right? And this is the entire mechanism removed, all right? It's that simple. Now, it will expose this slide-on washer, all right? This is not to worry, okay? Because the main purpose is I'm going to use a long 50 millimeter or 45 millimeter which is a one quarter thread bolt and it will slot in there. It's got a washer here to retain it and it will mount like so. Okay, so you'll see how this will go in the video. So what I'm going to do is with this device is I'm going to remove this screw first. So using a I'm using a three mil, three millimeter screw, and this bottom screw can be removed. Now I'm going to keep this screw, this bolt, all right, later on. So we've got three mounting holes, and then we're going to use a one eighth Allen socket, all right, or wrench, crack these bottom bolts like so. So you remove the one, what you remove these bolts like so. Now what you'll find is that the L-shaped bracket will come apart. Like so. So now we've got two separate pieces. I'm going to flip the pieces round so this side will now go like so. Okay? So we turn the piece around. We're now placing the bolts back in. Okay, and then we tighten them up. 
quite tight, not too tight, but tight enough that they don't come loose. And there you go. So what we've done is we flipped it round. So now our slide on screw here, you can see, right, is facing upwards. And now the screws on this side are flat against that. So we've all we've done, we've not destroyed it, we've not ruined the bracket because I can still use the bracket for later on. So that's what I've done with this L-shaped bracket. So I've just flipped it round. So this washer now is going this way, okay? And this is what I'm interested in, is that extra rubber grip, okay? This will become apparent further on the video and you'll see, what, you see why I've done this. Now at the moment, it's quite a robust L-shaped bracket. It's aluminium. Uh, you may want to make your own L-shaped bracket. It really does depend on your design. So then guys and girls, first off, what I've done is I've made a cardboard template. Now, as you can see here, I've worked out the sizes that I wanted for my setup. But please remember that your setup will be vastly different than mine. Um, you may want to copy this exactly what I've done, but it just depends on your telescope setup. So it depends on if you've got a tandem system or a single system for your solo setup. It really does depend. All right, but this, what I always say is work out the measurements and figure out what sort of material you need. Now, with this, I have this 420 millimeters long, and the actual, uh, the height is 297 millimeters. Now, these are pre-cut, as you notice here. This is 120, 120 square, and this is, this is 120, 100, and 120 of this side. Also, I have marked out the holes of where my bracket's going to go. So first thing I have is align this hole up, like so, all right, and I marked out where the hole's gonna be for my bracket to be fixed. Also, I, you can't really see it in this, but I actually marked out uh, with a permanent marker two temporary um, threaded holes. I haven't drilled them yet, but I've marked them out here. So I'm going to have three screws supporting the entire sunshade. I highly recommend that you do the cardboard template because that will give you a rough estimation on the typical size you want for your sunshade. Now the material I've got is a Perspex plastic sheeting, all right? Same size, again, really does depend on your setup. Now I've picked Perspex because Perspex is very good against direct sunlight. Uh, it will able to withstand the heat up to about 100 degrees, which is more than ample. Some people will prefer to use ABS plastic, but bear in mind, uh, when you start using thermal setting or specialist uh, plastic, the prices go up. I got the Perspex because it is quite cheap and it's very good against the UV rays from the sun. All right, and all I do with this sheeting is I quite simply line up my size, and as you can see, it fits perfectly over my design, okay? So as you can see there, I get myself a scriber and I mark up the areas that I want to remove. So, so I mark out the square here. Okay. All right, and then same on this side. And again, mark up the areas like so. 
and then mark out the hole and the holes here like so so then once you've marked out the area you can see you can just see I've just scored out those edges there okay so I've got my two holes there all right the main hole there all right from the bracket and that's what I mean as soon as you make your as soon as you make your template it gets easier and all you have to do is mark out the areas you want to remove off your sun, off your sunshade all right so that's that's the plan as you can see there all we're going to do is I'm going to use a jigsaw right and I'm going to cut across cut out these squares and then use a drill bit probably four millimeter drill holes like so and then that is basically all I've got to do so now what we've got is we've cut the two square gaps as measured with our template okay so it matches okay like so so that matches perfectly and what I found easy is once I've drilled a three and a half millimeter hole there and five millimeter holes there and what I found was I grabbed my bracket now as you can see here we've already got a bolt here which is threaded and with this bolt all I did was I got the existing allen bolt after I drilled the first hole what I found was easy is to line it up on this bolt to hold it down to the bracket okay so once I lined it up with a bracket I found that you can angle the bracket along and then you can drill all the way through bit by bit using a one mil drill bit or a two mil drill bit right and as you go through this right one thing I found out is that uh, I drilled five mil I drilled the initial five mil for the plastic but for the metal itself after I've marked where the position where the hole is going to be you will see that there I used four mil holes I drilled all the way through okay and I used a five millimeter thread threading tool and tap okay and I tapped all the way straight across creating an, a metric five thread okay if you don't have a tap and die set all right you don't have to put the threads in there okay you can just use a five mil hole and draw and drill all the way through the bracket okay and you can what you could do is use longer bolts and just use a nut and washer in place there and bolt it that way all right it really does depend so you don't have to have a tap and die set to do this job but I prefer to create my own threads and uh, as you can see there it lines up perfectly so as you see before you um, put the bracket in give this a quick sand down like so so you make it nice and neat and then once you've done all right you can just recheck your work and it's quite easy again line it up like so and then use a allen key and then these are mimetric five bolts okay and these just slot in there in place like so just line them up first again i'm using washers to do this so the the bolt doesn't um, compress and crack the plastic which we don't want and again we just screw these in place like so you 
You don't have to use Allen bolts. You can use normal bolts if you wish. All right, there's, it's up, really up to your design. And that's how it bolts on there. So I've got three good Allen bolts there against my sun sh shield. And as you can see there, it looks like a very professional job. As you can see there, it's loads of... Uh, it looks really good there so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bracket and I'm going to peel off the protective coating because we don't really need the protective coating as such. So then guys and girls, here we go. I've got my tandem system with my Lunt Engineering 80mm ED refractor with the flip mirror conversion with my 600D and as you can see there, it's a nice setup. And we've got the Alta Astro 66mm ED refractor with the mighty Quark eyepiece. Uh, this is for Hydrogen Alpha. And as you can see, we've got some awesome setups. Now, the good thing about this setup is I can swap the flip mirror and the Quark system between each of these two telescopes. So all I have to do, if I want to go an image with a quark, I can just swap the quark and the diagonal over to the, the 80 millimeter ED refractor and then swap the flip mirror. It's that simple. Now you won't be able to see this very well, but in this part there, there is a hole that I can screw, that I can screw on onto the dovetail. And with this, as you can see with my sunshade, I can slide in over the telescope setup. So if I just move it slightly, you can see what I'm trying to do. So it's a very tight fit because I've made it that way, but it will, does slide in. And as you can see here, we then line up we get a four we got a 45 millimeter long one quarter allen bolt now i was going to get a one quarter like a hand knob but i'm still waiting for the sp for the parts coming so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to line it up to the existing hole there we go so we're lined up there like so Now, as you notice, it's, the setup is directly behind the, uh, as you can see there, we just got to move it along a bit. As you can see, you may have to move the telescope setup back and forth. So for the, for the 80, I need to slide it just a bit back like so okay okay so with that I'm using a 316 allen key and it's relatively easy to just tighten her up nip it up like so so that is basically the sunshade now installed. It's relatively easy, it just bolts on there like so. Very simple. So as you can see, we take a close look. That is the 45 millimeter long one quarter Allen bolt and it bolts on onto the dovetail okay like so and that's how it's mounted now as you notice you see that the solar finders are in front of the main telescope tubes okay so they're at the front and as you can see we take a look behind on this side it gives me enough room to gain access to the main focus as you can see, I can get access to the focus wheel. And uh, as you can see, 
I try to make it so it's quite tight but on the actual sunshade it's now blocked the quark okay away from the, sh the sun shadow so it's a very good fix what this will do is also help uh, protect the quark so the main trouble about ionized painted well ionized coated parts like this that the quark red ionized tends to fade very quickly also if I got the zoo camera on top this is also protected from the sun the trouble about the sun's rays it can actually fade the color on the quark or the zoo camera so this is the reason why we have these sunshades not only be able to look through the eyepiece shielded but also to protect the uh, the uh, camera and the quark delicate coatings okay the coatings here doesn't take long to start fading against the sun's strong light waves so as you can see there we've got a nice tight fixture there so as you can see there I've got my Skywatcher 102 Acromat refractor I've got the the latest star sharp solar finder fitted on there and even with all the, the attachment on the top of that telescope even though it's a larger setup the sunshade still fits perfectly all right we are no dramas so as you can see there I've not adjusted the gap I've just it was actually quite easy to put the sunshade easier than it was on the ED80 that I had but this just slots in bolted on there and as you can see I can still gain access to the focus wheel at the back of both telescopes and even though the 102 has a longer focuser it means that I'm be able to connect to a, a mirror diagonal an eyepiece in there without any dramas and as you can see it gives me plenty of room so I can use the telescope for solo observing all right so as you can see there where I've designed this sunshade you can actually get away with you know if you do it right you can I can use all my free telescopes that I use for solo imaging and observation well 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 guys and girls what can we say another glorious day the sun is up deep blue sky a little bit of cloud haze so we may lose a bit of detail on the sun's surface but as you can see I've got my trusty tandem solar system I've got my Alta Astro 66mm ED and I've got my Lunt Engineering 80 ED I'm going to use a bit of quark I'm going to use the quark as well to do a bit of hydrogen alpha work and I'm going to use a bit of white light as you can see using a solar filter and a DSLR camera and uh, do get a bit of the sunspot regions so as you can see fantastic little superb little system for solar work uh, mounted on EQ5 mount so this can track all day long okay not a problem that's all you really need for solar imaging a decent hydrogen alpha eyepiece like the quark or white solar work filter that's all you need for solar imaging so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to place my sun shield that I made as you can see compact design I'm still waiting for the thumb screw so I'm having to use the standard bolt to do this which is quite annoying but it just means that I have to use a, uh, some tools to do this and it's really as easy I put in the bolt okay into the L shaped bracket okay and it's really is that easy all I do is slot it in here because it's a bit of a tight fit it does I do have to play about with it which is a bit of the um, which is just my design so I have to feed it in there like so it will go in as you can see it went in not a problem believe it or not 
with the uh, Skywatcher 1 or 2, it's not really that difficult. So it's just because the Lunt engineering focuser, the actual 10 to 1 focuser, tends to stick out a bit more, so it can be a bit fiddly to play about with. I'm just tighten her up. Like so. There you go. So that is the sun shield in place, or sunshade you like to call it. And as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all, really. So as you can see here, um, I've got the, the sunshade adjusted. I'm very quite, I'm quite close to the focus tube, but I can still gain access to them without no problems. Uh, I had to readjust the L-shaped bracket. All right, now I am still top heavy on the RA axis, as you can see there. All right, and. Uh, it seems like I need to put some counterweight systems to try and counterbalance this effect, all right? Which is the disadvantage of using something like this because it adds the weight on there. So as you can see, I'm quite bottom heavy on this side. And I think that's due to the fact I've got the sunshade and all the quark and the, and the camera on this side. Now the reason why I had to put the sunshade that side is because if I put it on the other side all it's going to do is going to block my solar finders so I can't use them. So I've got to have the sunshade on this side. So from later on what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these further up the tube okay, so that I'm going to try and find a way to mount them on there all right so mount the solar finders in a different position and then maybe i can move this and it looks to me i can just simply just turn it around take the bolt off turn it around flip it around on this side to counterbalance the weight that way so that's the disadvantage of, of this setup is because it's too bottom heavy on the deck axis but we should be all right all right it's not perfect but uh, maybe I'll be able to get away with it. I'm not. I don't know. Also, with the added weight, I've had to put in a second counterweight. Okay. Usually, it's just a five counterweight. Okay. But as you can see, we are balanced on the RA axis, which is more important. All right. So we are balanced properly. Yeah, we're definitely balanced on the RA axis, despite having to put a counterweight on there. So, as you can see, there's a few teething problems, but this is what this video is all about, to show you guys and girls, if you're getting the same issues, and if you're doing this project, then I know what the problem is, so I've got to try and work out, so I'm going to put place these somewhere further up the tube, and then tilt this, tilt this round to this side, to sort of counterbalance the weight that way but as you can see it's not a bad little setup so far and uh, I can't wait to get start using it shade or shield is operating effectively imaging the Sun in white light so we're using the 80 millimeter found the Sun easy not a problem just have to line it up and as you can see we're just taking a, a video through the DSLR camera and we've got the prominent 
three sunspot formations there. I'm using the flip mirror so like once I've recorded I can just flip it over and then view through the eyepiece safely. We're going to start the quark as you can see there we haven't got it set up but we'll be setting that up very soon. As you can see I can still gain access to the, the focus not a problem and the good thing is you can see how effective the, um, the shield because I can see uh, the screen on the uh, on the DSLR camera so I'm gonna finish the recording of that so I can see see how easy it is with a bit of a blank screen so that you can see what you're doing so it really is impressive stuff and look at that detail of the Sun it really is impressive so uh, it's definitely kept the heat off it's protecting the equipment from here so it doesn't overheat uh, we'll be setting up the 66 for some hydrogen alpha but so far I'm really impressed with the results this makes a difference really does I think despite the few flaws it's made solar observing such a joy to use and don't forget I've had this telescope tracking the sun for a good two hours and uh, I must admit it really does work it really does work I've had no serious problems at all on the sheet itself so I've definitely picked the right plastic for this job but I must admit what a result what a result so as we can see here using our smart using our smart imaging setup with our new latest sunshade I'll tell you one thing it's such a joy to use now I can actually look at the Sun through the camera without having to put a, a cap or a hood and as you can see we are observing the Sun in white light so this is through the 80 millimeter ED refractor and as you can see we've got some very interesting sunspots really lovely sunspots here so I'm just going to as you can see there I don't know what regions they are I need to check it out through the NASA official website but I'll be able to tell you that that is very interesting to see large very large sunspots on there in like some sort of triangle formation this is absolutely amazing and uh, I must admit uh, I've got some really good detail there really good detail despite the um, despite trying to line it up trying to get used to the sunshade I must admit even though the the deck axis <laughs> but uh, on the deck axis of the mount it's a bit bottom heavy but actually it's tracking all right with the sun and uh, I must admit um, I'm tracking superb to honest with you so uh, as you see there I've got some really good detail of that sun there really crisp and uh, I must admit, I love these prominent sunspots, they are really are awesome. So going into free time zoom, and as you can see, I'm just going to slew the target. Oh wow, look at that, there's actually loads more sunspots. So as you can see there, there's some really good detail there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a lovely region of uh, sunspots. I thought there was just three prominent ones but you can clearly see there's a lot more structure and there's another big one uh, from the edge as well of the sun. So it just shows you that uh, we've got some really good detail there and uh, I must admit uh, this is the advantage of so using so white solar filter. Using that white light solar filter, you can really pick up some really good sunspots there, and the detail is amazing. So, there's quite a lot to see there, really is impressive stuff. Uh, it's actually been not bad seeing conditions as well. We're still tracking all right using our latest sunshade, and I must admit, it's such a joy to actually look through the eyepiece, able to. Uh, look through the telescope we are having to use a cap or a sunshade I've got the sunshade built in no need to touch anything 
or anything like that so it's such a joy to use and I must admit look at that detail there amazing amazing amount of detail so very impressive results so what I'll be doing is I'll be taking a video of this and uh, hopefully uh, be able to stack these images and show you there's some real proof So as you can see we are using the quark through the zoo camera and we're recording that surface detail that we found. Uh, this is such a joy to use really is this sunshade even though it doesn't let me uh, shield against the uh, the laptop which is a real shame but I'm, like you say this has kept all my assembly cool and uh, I can view between each one very easily all right and as you can see there I'm very well shielded against the the sun shadow I must admit it really is impressive now with my setup as a one or two people have asked me there's one or two people asked me that with this tandem system now as you can see i've got this aligned up to the sun here now people have been saying can you have the telescopes both aligned at the same time without having you know and unfortunately with this system it isn't this is a fixed system i mean it is budget i made it myself using those home using those dovetail clamps bolted it on a normal vixen dovetail from my Mac 180 now I'm slightly off I'm lined up with the as you can see there through the quark system I'm lined up there not a problem here I'm slightly off so what I do is I just use me since scan handset or my mobile phone and all I do is slew my deck axis from left to right and then I should be in view with one or the other it's a real shame that i can't as i'm imaging i can be viewing at the same time because this is a basic setup yeah uh, you know, i can live with it i can live with it however if you want a proper dedicated rig where you can view at both angles then you're gonna need a special kind of adapter bracket where you can actually what it does is it's like a a clamping system that you slightly adjust each of the, uh, the telescope tubes so you adjust one side you have one that's fixed then you're just one side to then get it into view all right however those setups are hideously expensive for what they are because all it is is just a clamping system which you can adjust that's all it is and to be honest with you I'm not paying 400 600 pounds for something that you can just slightly so that you can get both telescopes in view of that to of your target it is really is pathetic so my budget system has its limitations I rather 
use this system there's a lot of weight on there and to be honest with you, the clamping system has handled it not a problem I've had no dramas whatsoever with the tracking I'm imaging I'm, I'm using the telescope for observing as well it's not a problem all I do is adjust with since Gans and set and I just move it at the deck axis one between the other that is it that's all you got to do I cannot see the point of these clamping systems because all they are they just some of them that you have to make an alternative clamp you need a dovetail or a lost mandy for starters and then some of these clamping systems you got to bolt on and you still got to adjust it to get it right personally quick slew on the handset happy days it just means that you're not going to get both you're not going to get both telescopes on on the sun together with this system but what it does allows me to do is if i do want to switch between two it allows this optical system to cool down whilst i'm using the other and then all it is is a quick adjustment so as we can see using our latest sunshade mod and we've got the Alta Astro 66 ED through the quark using the Zoo ASI 120. And as you can see, we've got some quite a lot of features hovering about as we slew the telescope. Right. I'm going to try and find some uh, interesting targets. Oh, yes, yeah, so we've got a few promises there. Say there's quite a lot of detail. I need to I think I need to focus the image because um, there we go. Some very interesting targets here. Very interesting targets. So you're just going to scan the scan what you got. I think this part is where the yeah that is the interesting part. I'm after. This is the part where we we are seeing the sunspots region in like a triangle formation, and I think this is it. As you can see there, we've got uh, in Algen Alpha, it shows you a different light through there. So as you can see there, we've got a different uh, sort of level of structure there. It's definitely that area, but uh, we're just going to scan for some more targets. Don't seem to be that many promises because uh, there's more of the solar, it's more of the sunspots region we're starting to see a lot. We don't mean to say it's not active, the sun, because at the moment it's been very active with a lot of things. a few promises, not a lot, not a lot, I sound like Paul Daniels saying that word, not a lot. <laughs> surface itself and it's definitely that region it's definitely what I'm looking at with those sunspots like I say you scan the surface find what the interesting or catches your eye filaments and 
This is definitely catching me out. This is definitely the target we're after because this is what we're after. So I've got the sunspots in the white light and it's this, it's definitely caught my eye. So I'm going to... Yeah, it's definitely caught my eye, this one. Because this is the one that... Uh, I'm going to minimize the size. And what that does is it speeds up the... Uh, yeah, it speeds up my... Uh, frames per rate. Now I do lose a lot of frames per rate because I'm running my recording thing, my camera in there, so I'm losing the actual frames per rate than I should actually have. But for the sake of um, showing you guys and girls that uh, what I'm seeing and what you see through the quark, yeah when I, when I dip it down the exposure you do actually see the sunspot regions even better there. I don't want to go too, too less. Yeah, I need to minimise the gain because my gain is way too high, way too high. So I need to go to at least 50% and then up the exposure. So you've got to take the balance between this camera just going to centralize it so I go into my target sign which is another unique feature there that shortcut has if it works there we go so we've got a cross there we want to get this target sort of central we can Oh, I think we got I think we're all right there there's a slight wind but it's not affecting I've seen a lot worse tracking than this but yeah need to see that's to fine-tune that I mean if you got too bright you like to start to do some detail Record it in there because I get some decent amount of detail there. We need to lower the gain even more. This gain is not always a good thing. Right, so we'll record this part. As long as we're below 50% gain, we should be alright. So we've got 65 per second not brilliant this camera can go a lot better than that that's all we do set time limit I think we're going to go for a good I think I think a good I'm going to go for a, a good two minutes well, not 20 minutes. I'm going to hour drive with that. <laughs> so good. A good two minutes on there. I'll be happy with that. So bang in the two minutes and see what we get. But so far, at 63, 63 frames per second, it's not bad. It's not brilliant. I would like to see a little bit more data than that, <clears throat> a little bit more uh, frames per rate, because the faster the frames per rate, the better. However, we are getting some good scene conditions. So, using the 8x60 mode, we've got some really good detail of those sunspot regions. They're definitely sunspots, but we're just seeing it in a different light. We're seeing the surface more than the white light. The white light does show you the sunspots regions very effectively, but the Argent Alpha through the core just delivers a bit more detail on there. And as you can see there, we've got, yeah, I'm happy with results. 
so far we've been doing two minutes which is quite long I think that's a bit too much for my liking but two minutes because don't forget the Sun changes rapidly the, the surface detail does change rapidly over time but two minutes we should be all right so we shouldn't get any shifting with the images whatsoever but as long as we stay in target in there we should be good to go but looking at that I would be happy with results so yeah we dropped down a lot of frames per second because like always I'm running several programs when I take all this apart my uh, frames per rate will be a lot better than this but I'm sacrificing uh, my imaging session for you guys and girls so that you get to see what I'm doing so yeah reasonable about the data and I'd say I've just reached yeah it'll start to buffer the frames so we're just over 2000 frames yeah, a lot of frames has been dropped which I found that absolutely annoying but uh, it'll buffer up some of the remaining frames so we're up to about 3000 frames very important to buffer this this camera that's the ISI 120 is good but it is a slow but you do get good hybrid frames per rate and if you're using a quicker computer that helps too but so far as it's buffering all those remaining frames we should have some good level detail there so uh, as you see there six or oh, five thousand frames just let it buffer let it keep buffering basically all it's doing it's rewriting the frames in its memory um, a lot of cameras have a buffer system where it will retain that memory and it transfers the data a lot quicker with this one doesn't have a buffering system you can actually lose data so let it go through the motion and then start again but so far a lot of data I've just collected there and uh, I'll be very impressed what I get captured here
Well, 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 guys and girls, what do you reckon? What an awesome little modification. The sun shield or sunshade, whatever you want to call it, has worked a massive treat. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, this extra plastic layer, not only does it protect me from the sun, plus it protects me, my camera and my quark away from the excessive heat, thus preventing staining the ionized red coating. I can also see through the eyepiece where I'm going to use a sun hood or blanket or whatever, none of that, which could affect the tracking, which is, can be annoying sometimes. But with this extra piece of plastic there, I can view the sun and image with, with ease. The only downside is can be a bit tricky when you're trying to line your solar finders and then match it up to the camera through the telescope or the eyepiece. That can be a bit tricky sometimes, but you do get used to it. And I must admit, I mean, first time using this new modification has worked out massively. I did have problems with the deck axis balance, but as you can see with the RA axis, I'm balanced in that, that's more important. So I'm a bit top heavy, well, I'm a bit top bottom with the weight issues on the deck axis. So I need to figure out how I'm going to place the, without blocking the solar finders, maybe I need to move the solar finders further up the telescope tubes and then reposition the sunshade on another side okay so i have got certain issues with that design um i was concerned with my head being in the way but actually that's not actually been a problem with me so i've been able to image and view the eyepiece without no problems whatsoever at the moment i'm taking shots of the sunspots formations and i must admit very interesting target there I, must, I totally agree but so far to be honest with you with that added weight on one side the eq5 mount is tracking extremely well as i point out to you guys and girls when you're solar imaging or observing make sure you are using a dedicated solar filter and i mean it's a must have so apart from the quark has a built-in filtration system on there okay it does protect your eyes because it's got a blocking filter however i still use a uv ir filter built on the diagonal of the 66 we have no dramas on the 80 i'm just using a standard Barda white light solar filter they're the best ones to use the safest ones to use as long as they're secure and you just do a quick check just to make sure that there's no damage on the actual uh, filter itself you should be good to go and these filters last a long time and as you can see there even through white light solar filters you can see a lot of detail and you know, i did see a lot of um, sunspot formations there and i must admit very interesting target indeed and that's just through a white solar filter so never ever you know think that white light is not the you know white light is limited because you are you can see a, a great deal on certain days where if it's clear and the earth's steady the amount of detail i was seeing from there was quite impressive to say the least through the quark that's a different ball game altogether again you're seeing a different type of light through the hydrogen alpha region you see a lot more of the structure and detail no maybe not much on the sunspots but you can definitely see a lot of surface detail there's a lot of activity at the moment so what a bit perfect opportunity you know when the nights are getting shorter get your set up make your sunshade or shield okay it really does benefit and again it just depends on how you make your sun shield because the sizes here that i use will be different compared to your setup 
Don't forget, you don't have to make a tandem system. You can always make the sun shield for a single system. Maybe figure out how to mount it onto the optical tube itself. But that extra piece of plastic there is a godsend. It really is. And would I recommend it? Yes, I would. So please use this video as a guide. And again, make one yourself because it is definitely a must. Uh, definitely a must have. Such a joy to use. I could see comfortably. I can image comfortably without any dramas whatsoever. For the sake of sacrificing some of the counterbalance of the deck axis, I've got away with enjoying the views that way, which is so much better. So please hit a like button because again, I, I do put a lot of hard work into this video. So please hit that like button. Again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe onto my channel and again, please share this video out because it may help someone who having similar problems and this could be the solution for them okay so the sunshade should help out massively it's not easy solo imaging or observing but this does add it does make it a lot more enjoyable to, to use and please hit the notifications bell by hitting that bell it will notify you on the latest videos that I will pu publish out very very soon and believe me like always MP Astro always delivers the goods with genuine content video content what you see is what you get all right this is not stage no BS involved this is exactly what I'm doing all right I'll never ever ever mislead any of my viewers or my fans whatsoever so it's exactly what you see. This is real astronomy. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I wish you all clear skies.